Are we in the tech bubble 2.0? In today's video, I'm going to show you some charts that are going to make your head explode. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. We have seen many bubbles of the past. It's not necessarily just tulips. It isn't in the form of some JPEGs on your computer screen. We can see this in different places. I want to show you some examples of some stuff that has gone wild and is right in front of our faces happening right before our very eyes. Join me as we look at this. You can see things have gotten out of whack. That purple line there, that is a 200 day moving average of a stock of a company known as Nvidia. Nvidia has been performing incredibly well, becoming one of the most valuable companies in the world by being the, you know, the sort of cornerstone of AI. Oh, AI is popular. Who gets to benefit as a result of that? Oh, it's NVIDIA. Yeah, worse, they're selling, you know, chips to everybody. Well, OpenAI themselves has said we're going to make our own chips, so they won't need chips from other companies, and they've got very deep pockets, they'll start on that. In the meantime, though, NVIDIA has done very well with these companies needing to buy those chips from them. It's just gotten a little tiny bit, just a hair out of whack, okay? So what we're looking at is the 200-day moving average. When things move out, like way out, uh, it starts to get out of balance, and that usually finds its way back into civilization and it did that from 2021 into 2022 it went down considerably and you see that there and where did it go well just a little bit below that 200 day moving average it's a very strong um you know support level oftentimes what we see in the markets looking at this so it has basically gone up ever since other than that period in 2023 ah, it's up and down it's up and down it's been a look at that it looks like it moved in a single day upward which pretty much it did going into territory has never never gone before it is completely absurd to be this far away from its 200 day moving average of course, it's up, it's down. That That's normal. But when we get to these levels, it starts to scream crazy. What about this? NVIDIA looks a lot like Cisco in the final phase of the dot-com bubble. Everybody at that time in that bubble, like just prior, they were saying Cisco's going to go to this price. Cisco's going to go to that price. Name any of these hot stocks at the time. It was going to go higher. Everybody said higher, 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 just like any other bubble. Oh, no, no, you don't understand, GPS. The metaverse is going to be the, the hot thing. You're going to want to own digital real estate next to Snoop Dogg because you can't buy the real thing next to him in, in real life. You're going to buy, be able to buy it in the digital world, and that's super valuable. People were selling homes in a digital world that are now nearly valueless. People were buying pictures of digital monkeys, JPEGs, because there was only a few of them, and therefore that made it valuable. And so people bought them, spent millions of dollars, Justin Biebs, he bought one or, or more, and then the price just absolutely collapsed. You got to understand, just because it's a few of them in existence doesn't mean that gives it value. You have to have somebody who desires that, right? That's important. So there's definitely gray area on what a bubble is. It's not just because price goes higher. That's not a bubble. It depends on its value. And of course, it depends in... Real okay, so its value, that is, of course, something that it depends 
somebody might see it valuable and others might say, no, that I don't want that. It depends on its peers. Okay. So if you have one house in the neighborhood, that is, you know, everybody's priced at a million dollars, but this guy over here decides, no, no, my home is worth $2 million. It's not there. It's comparables. And then, of course, where is it in relation to where things have been recently? So if all the homes in that neighborhood were selling at one million, and now this guy's coming out at two million or four million or ten million, uh, not really, because all of those properties have been selling for a million. So that kind of brings it to an average, even when maybe it's the best house on the street. You know, it's just the other way around. They always say buy the ugliest house on the street. That's the way it works on both sides. NASDAQ versus NASDAQ breadth. So the breadth has become very very bad over the last uh, few years where those you know few hot stocks have been carrying the market upward. That is a sign of weakness in the markets. However, you could see that the price has been doing very well. There's no question about that week after week. After week after week, in just one instance over the last several weeks, all the way back into the beginning of November, the S&P 500 has been doing so well, incredibly well, as expected. This is expected, but we haven't seen the breadth improve. That is a concern. Looking at the global equity risk love. Um, this is Bank of America, and basically what they do here is just showing us that things have become a little stretched in this measurement. This is the, by the way, all country world index. So breaking it down, uh, the US has been performing very well, outperforming the world. Looking at this, it just show us that it's, you know, whenever we go into that euphoria, it tends to be a bearish signal. Oftentimes, we come back down to reality when we get to these levels. And, you know, the markets in the United States especially have been pushed too high and, and should at least trade sideways for a while. Um, if not, uh, you know, a little bit of a contraction. It's just, it's gone too far. It's really gone too far. Or we have breadth improve where the Magnificent Seven don't perform well, but other stocks start to do well. Here we have Bitcoin. You could see that in the measurement, of course, of all these different ETFs that have been launching and so on. A lot of attraction. We are seeing fund flows improving in these ETFs. And, uh, of course, people pulling their cash out of Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, okay, uh, and which had tapered off. All I'm saying here is that more money is going into um, Bitcoin I'm sure people are starting to allocate a percentage of their portfolios to it. It makes it a lot easier. It's, it's of course, not Bitcoin, uh, but people think that it's Bitcoin, so they're putting their money there. Maybe they've got a retirement account, whatever it is. They, they can't, in this way, own physical Bitcoin, real Bitcoin, I should say. Um, and instead, they're, okay, I got this portfolio. Instead of putting it in this or that, they're putting it in 1% in Bitcoin, let's say. So that's what's happening here. That gives us a little bit of insight as to what's going on with the uh, behavior, uh, investor behavior, and what they see is risk, their risk tolerance at this time. At the time of this recording, Bitcoin has been doing very well, going back up to 46,000. And so you could see what people are into, what they're feeling, the sentiment is there at this time. I worry that stocks have gone too far, too fast. I called the bottom back in uh, September, late September 2022. So I said that, I documented that here on the channel, two times in the community post section of the channel, as well as during that period of time, suggesting this on multiple videos. Why? Because looking at the patterns as well as the money mirror method. I've done a video about the money mirror method here on the channel. It's in one of the playlists that I have on the, on the channel. But of course, it's something that I cover weekly on the Finance Live. Finance Live is something that people just get the absolute most depth and they understand everything from a 30,000 foot view. 
being able to be a better investor, being able to understand their personal circumstances, whether it's too much debt, whether it's knowing where to allocate capital, all of that stuff discussed for two hours every week, Finance Friday Live, link in the description, hit that thumbs up button on the way out. I do appreciate that very much. And as always, you got to search for me, The Money GPS, likely not going to end up in your feed, The Money GPS. I'll see you here tomorrow. Take care.